So for video number two, we're going to start taking a look at the types of motion studies that are available. Now there's three main types, animation, basic motion, and motion analysis. Each one solves differently, each one has different options. Uh, it's almost like there's three different programs all built in available for you to use. So if you ever see an animation solved differently in one of these three settings, there is a reason for that. So let me take you briefly through how to understand or how to think about each one. So animation is the first one. It's the default, and it's great for just visually representing things. So for example, I call this my Roadrunner cartoon uh, motion study type. You don't have to have gravity unless you look down and realize that you've fallen off a cliff. There's no such thing as inertia or anything else. Things just move wherever they darn well please. Now, there are a lot of things that are not available in animation, however. So a lot of the, the contacts and a lot of the other things that uh, you might otherwise want to do um, just simply either aren't available or just don't work or, or won't be uh, calculated in the same way. So, for example, if I came in here and I said I wanted to do a contact between some solid bodies... It comes in and it adds that contact, but notice it's turned off. So anytime you see a feature up here that's turned off, that's because that feature is not supported in this animation. So going on to basic motion, this is a little bit like your physics class. So in physics class, you go ahead and you say, I want to drop an object and I have a uh, rate of uh, drop or I've got friction applied and I want to calculate some basic you know movement and just kind of see what happens this one basic motion is the most complicated one you can do with just a SolidWorks standard license contacts and various other things are uh, uh, supported but what's not supported is more engineering type questions so for example, you want to see how quickly something falls, you can do that here. But if you want to know what kind of forces are involved as it starts to make contact, or if you want to see what kind of forces are involved in these linkages from not only the force of the motor, but also from the inertial effects of all these big heavy steel components of the part, that's not an option for basic motion. That's where you've got to go to motion analysis. Now, if you open up yours and you don't see motion analysis, that's because you don't have SolidWorks Motion add-in turned on. Motion analysis, this is the Atoms solver. This is full-on motion simulation. And in order to get there, you've got to go to your add-ins and turn on SolidWorks Motion. Or go to Tools, Add-ins, and then just make sure that Motion is enabled. So with motion enabled, you do have the ability to turn on motion analysis. Uh, one quick note, a lot of times people will turn on motion analysis, do some work, and then they'll close SolidWorks. And when they come back, they forget to enable motion analysis, and then things aren't working the way they expect them to. That's because when you open without motion, it just defaults back down to one of the other types. So make sure before you open it, either turn on motion, or if you forgot, Put it back into motion analysis so that you can perform that analysis. With motion, a lot more is going to be calculated. There's going to be a lot more accuracy involved. There's things like horsepower, torque, force, and those components can be exported using results and plots. So a lot of the options sort of along this toolbar here and along the top of the feature tree in your motion uh, timeline are going to become available as you move forward. So let's talk about scenarios where you might want to do that. For this one, uh, if I wanted to just show an operator, you know, what to expect the machine to do, I might use animation because I just want to say it goes from here to here to here. If I wanted to understand a little bit about how something might swing a little bit when I sort of let it go or maybe I'm you know, dropping a ball and I want to kind of watch it bounce around, I would need basic motion for that in order to understand uh, how it's going to kind of, uh, you know, the inertia is going to be uh, transferred as it hits. 
but then if I wanted to actually size the motor for a movement profile in a specific direction of a certain amount of weight, what I can do is specify that in motion analysis and then plot the power requirements throughout that. So that's kind of a brief overview of the different types of motion studies. Each one does solve differently, and as things get more and more complex, you're liable to see that they solve differently between them. So if you're having trouble, you might check a different one or just be very consistent about which one you're choosing to make sure you get consistent outputs and results from that motion study.